<coughs> Praise the Lord. Our scripture, I want to thank Robert for reading that as well, is found in Mark chapter 10, verse 18, which reminds us that no one is good but one. And who is that? That's God. No one is good but God. But I want to take you this morning, a couple of chapters before Mark 10, in Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, verse 25. Mark chapter 5, verse 25. And we're familiar with this story. <clears throat> this is the story of the woman who had the problem of the bleeding and also the story of Jesus going to Jairus' house to heal his daughter. Mark chapter 5, verse 25. The Bible says, Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. 12 years non-stop flowing of blood. Let's pray, shall we? Father in heaven, Lord God, thank you for your amazing grace as we heard it this morning. I ask for your spirit to be now in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, what's interesting is that this woman had an issue of bleeding for 12 years. Jairus' daughter was 12 years old. There's a, there's a significance here with the number 12. Uh, symbolically, 12 represents a kingdom number, the, uh, a church number. There are 12 tribes of Israel, 12 apostles, 12 gates to the city, 12 foundations on, uh, on the New Jerusalem. When you read Revelation chapter 12, you find the woman standing on the moon, which represents a church, with 12 stars around her head. Yet, this woman here, for 12 years, as it says, a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years years. What does the blood represent? Now it can represent covering um, forgiveness when, when we think of the blood of Jesus, but in this context, in this context of the bleeding of this woman, if you turn to, to Leviticus, Leviticus tells us what this blood represents. Leviticus chapter 15. Leviticus chapter 15. You go there, we'll read verses 19. Leviticus, what chapter? 15 and verse 19. What does this blood represent? The <clears throat> it says, if a woman has a discharge and the discharge from her body is blood, she shall be set apart seven days, and, what, and whoever touches her shall be unclean until evening. Everything that she lies on during her impurity shall be unclean. Also, everything that she sits on shall be unclean. Whoever touches her bed shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until the evening. And whoever touches anything that she sat on what, what shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. If anyone is on, if anything is on her bed or anything on which she sits when he touches it, he shall be unclean until evening. And if any man lies with her at all, so that her impurity is on him, he shall be unclean seven days and, it, and every bed on which she, he lies shall be unclean. Verse 25, if a, man has, if a woman has a discharge of blood for many days other than, other than at the time of her customary impurity, or 
if it, if it run beyond her unusual time of impurity. Can we say that that, that applied to this woman in Mark? Absolutely. All the days of her unclean discharge shall be as the days of her customary impurity. She shall be unclean. There's a word that keeps repeating over and over and over again. And what is, what, what is that? Unclean. Unclean. So go, go back with me to Mark chapter 5. This woman, in a way, represents a church. Has a, has a blood issue, and this blood issue represents unclean. She is unclean. For 12 years, this woman walked unclean. Everywhere she sat was unclean. People had to distance themselves because she was unclean. Everyone knew that she was unclean. She couldn't come to church like the rest and sit down and enjoy church service, prayer meeting, women's retreat. She was unclean. Unclean. In a way, this woman represents the church as a human race. This is our condition. We are unclean. We are filthy and we are sick. Everyone is unclean. And sometimes we forget that and we, and we, we label others unclean, but not myself to be unclean. The Bible says that all have fallen short. All are sinners. Amen? Amen. And so, so, so sometimes we, we label others with names, you know, uh, alcoholic, uh, adulterer, whatever the sin may be. Somebody may be, somebody may have a child out of marriage and there's names for for, for that person, and they call them adulterers, and they may have moral issues, but somebody else may not know how to control their tongue and have a mouth issue. It is still sin. Sin is sin, and, and we cannot and should not label others because we are all in the same boat as sinners. Some Are revealing more than others, but everyone has their vice that they need the Holy Spirit to help them overcome. Everyone is unclean. All of us are sinners. And that's why in, it's there in Mark chapter 5, verse 26. What does she try doing? It says in verse 26, it says, and had, tr and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew what? Grew worse. Sometimes we try to make ourselves clean by maybe doing something or, or maybe we think by giving money we become clean. We may end up in a worse condition than what we started. But praise God that Jesus was going by. Because there in verse 27 and 28, it says, When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. I shall be made well. The depths that God goes to save you and me are beyond comprehension. It makes no difference how deep you are in sin. It makes no difference. There are consequences for sin, yes. But to God, He can clean and cleanse you from that sin. There are people who, who used to be drunks, who used to be addicted to drugs, who used to be abusers, violent smokers, and by the grace of God have been cleansed because God is able to change through his Holy Spirit. Do you believe that, church? Yeah. Jesus came by. And what I appreciate, and every time you find this in the Old and New Testament, that Jesus, that God, is never turned off by our sinful 
condition. Don't ever forget that. Jesus is never, ever, ever turned off by my sinful condition, by your sinful condition. You can count on God for grace and for power. For both. For grace and for power. Where he comes to you and, and he sees that you are filthy in a mess of sin. And he picks you up. Doesn't stone you, but he picks you up. Forgives you, cleanses you. And then he says, go and what? Sin no more. I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. He gives us the grace that we don't deserve. But he gives us the grace and he gives us the power to continue in walking in him, in a newness of life. The Bible says that if you are in Christ, you are a new creation, a new creature, a new person. Unfortunately, what keeps people from coming to Jesus is only one thing, and that's pride. It's not your work. You can't convince me that it's your hours, that it's your friends or your neighbors or your family. It's pride deep inside your heart. From making that commitment to God, making that commitment to Christ. We don't want, we don't want others to know that we have a problem and that we need repentance, that we need forgiveness, that we need to be baptized. We think that the church is full of perfect saints. <laughs> we'll get back to that. There in Mark chapter 5, verse 27, it says, When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment, for she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. Immediately, Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. How do you think that immediately must have felt after 12 years of constant, every day, bleeding? I'm surprised she's even alive. No sure she was anemic. No color in, in her face. Many uh, health issues. I don't doubt. You think she felt there immediately that something changed? The Bible says she did. She felt it immediately. You see, for her to get healed, she had to get low. She had to get humble. And she had to be exposed. Remember, she was unclean. People knew she was unclean. So if she stepped out into public, people knew. And she would let others know that she was unclean. For us, church, to be cleansed by God, we have to humble ourselves. We have to expose ourselves. Expose ourselves. God knows that we are all unclean. We're all dirty. We're all sinful. If we don't do it, for sure we probably think it. There are still people in the church who drink alcohol. There are still people in the church who smoke, who are having affairs, who are fornicating, who are breaking the Sabbath. And you know what? This is a place where they need to be. Amen. This is exactly the place where they need to be, where you and I need to be. Out there, apart, away from Jesus, we're not going to improve, but we're going to get worse. Where Jesus is is where sinners need to be, right here in, this, in these church walls, in this church family, where we can lift each other up, Pray for each other, encourage each other, be accountable for each other. And remembering that others may have an issue, but also I have an issue too. We all come 
to church to be healed, to be cleansed, to be cleansed. I heard a pastor one time say that at a hospital, the heart patients aren't criticizing the cancer patients or the diabetic patients aren't pointing fingers to other patients. Everybody in the hospital's goal is to get better and to get well. Our goal here is not to look what disease you have, what disease I have, but to look to Jesus who cleanses us and makes us whole and makes us clean and makes us clean. That's why Mark 10, 18, no one is good, no one, but one, and that is God, and that is God. Isaiah 64 reminds us, in case, in case you don't think so, turn to Isaiah chapter 64, that we are all unclean. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6, it doesn't matter what you contribute, what you donate, what, who your parents or generations of Adventists you are in the church or what rank you are in the church which there is no rank in the church we are all sinners saved by grace there is no elder deacon and better no everybody here is at the same level needing salvation and humbling Isaiah Isaiah what chapter 64 verse 6 but we are all like unclean thing, like an unclean thing. And all our righteousness are like filthy rags. There is nothing good that we have to bring to offer. Nothing. So don't come when you come to the church with your righteousness. On the contrary, take it off if you think you have any. And humble yourself, expose yourself before God, before God, God always gets close and is near, but you have to reach out, you have to stretch out, you have to want Him. Remember in the story, Jesus was heading in, a, in another direction, and she heard that He was right there, and she says, it's now or never. It could have been later, maybe she, Later, she could have met Jesus somewhere else, but she had had enough of her condition and says, I'm going to reach out to him right now. There has to come a point in our lives that we say, enough is enough, Lord. And you reach out to him to cleanse you, to change your way of thinking. Jesus decided, and I praise the Lord, that looking down on this earth in its sinful condition, in its uncleansing, in its unclean condition, filth, he decided that looking down wasn't enough, but he came down. He came down among the dirty, among the filth, among the unclean. And God was totally vulnerable, totally exposed, walking just near enough for somebody to touch him. For somebody to touch him. Church, do you know that you are unclean? Did, did you know that? Yeah, you are. In case you don't, I'm reminding you right now. We just read it from the Word of God. We are all I'm unclean. I am unclean. My family is unclean. My children are unclean. Every single one of us are unclean. Did you know that you need Christ to be clean? There is no other way to be cleansed. Nobody else can pay and cover our sins but Jesus Christ. Him who died for our sins. So the question is, do you want to be cleansed? You know you're dirty. Do you want to be cleansed? If you want to be cleansed, then participate. Then participate this morning in this holy, sacred, humbling 
service of communion service. And be cleansed not by your works, not by your contributions, not by your titles, but by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen, Amen. Amen. friends. We're going to participate now. I'm going to have a word of prayer and we will divide into the Family Life Center. And for those that will stay here, we will, there will be a song service held by our young people. So we can keep ourselves in a prayerful spirit, contemplating the sacrifice and love that Jesus has for you and for me, and thanking him for that great sacrifice. We're all unclean, every single one of us. And the only one that can cleanse us is Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Lord, because you remind us, and sometimes we forget. We may think that we're better than others, or maybe cleaner than others, but we are all covered with sin. For you came to save everyone, the whole world, not just certain people. Because every single one of us needs, needed to be cleansed and saved. So now, Lord, as we partake and participate in the foot washing, the humbling ordinance of foot washing, I ask that your Spirit may move among us, and touch our hearts, to be humble to one another, to be loving to one another as we partake in this humbling service. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed to go to the Family Life Center where there will be groups of married couples, men and women as well, and meet back here.